You guys need some paper? I can just whip some out. <laughs> well, trust me, I want to keep it in my card, so by all means, use it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And if you need me to come back to this in a little bit, we can. That's no problem at all. I'll put it back up there when we're done. All right. So all that stuff was stuff before we even sit down and talk to the person. That was all learning how and what we're going to watch for when we're talking. So it turns out I gave you a whole bunch of homework before I actually got to telling you what we're, you know, what you're going to do with it. Um, again, these are bullet points. We're going to go through these. Uh, back in uh, the, uh, I, I love saying this. David Paul Brown was an orator back when there actually were orators. In, uh, the, the late 18th century, he was born like 17, I don't know, right towards the end of the Revolutionary War, just a little before, somewhere in there. He was, a, he was an attorney, he was a speaker, he was uh, also, uh, he's in some circles attributed as one of the first or maybe even the father of detectives in this country. He actually, he, he was a specialist in interviewing. And his whole, his whole pitch is that you moderate your approach that when the, with the person. If you've got somebody that is you know, big and boisterous and lots of energy, you, you, you talk to them like they've got lots of energy and lot, you're excited that they're, they're, that they're that excited. But if, you're, if you come in big and bouncy and you've got somebody that's very meek and, and not sure of themselves and you're doing this right in their face because you're all excited and they're going to get smaller and smaller. And, so you've got to moderate your approach to them. Um, if, and if, you're, if you think that somebody's trying to, trying to take you for a dope, be aware of that. And, and the, you don't automatically have to try and outsmart a person if they're trying to take you. If they, if they think I'm smarter than this person, I got this, I got this beat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outsmart them. Sometimes playing the dope is the smarter role. Anybody remember the Smothers Brothers? Tommy and Dickie Smothers? They do, the, they do this comedy routine and... and and, uh, and Dickie is Dickie on stage is the smart one. He's the one that uses all the nice words and talks about how beautiful everything is. And Tommy plays the dope and he goes, oh, a lot. Tom's the smarter one. Tom actually is the prime, was the primary writer. I think they're actually retired now. But he, Tom's the primary writer. And you have to be smart to get, to make the, the jokes out of all these other things. When, when you're dealing with somebody that's trying to take you for a fool and, and Ron knows this too. Uh, not to point over at the guy in uniform only, but uh, you know, Ron knows this too. When you've got somebody that you know is this, you know, thinking, oh, this this guy's dumb. I got this beat. Play dumb. See what you can get him sucked into. It's great. Oh, you can have great fun with us. You really can. So you moderate your approach. If you've got somebody that's um, you know that, that's solid, just talk to them. You know, like a good solid person. If you got somebody that's trying to Play some little game, you know, play the game. It, just moderate your approach. Think of who you're dealing with. There's no only one way to, to interview. <clears throat> the real fun with interviews, and the, the, the paradox in them, is that we want somebody to tell us if we shouldn't hire them. They're there, they want a job. We want to know why not to hire this person. But they're not going to actually want to tell us that. And also, and this, some of the things we'll talk about are also for, uh, also apply for actually uh, doing your, your reference checks, calling up on the phone and saying, hey, this person applied for a job with me, what do you think of them? The, the, either, one of, either one of those scenarios, whether you're talking to them, the, the, the candidate themselves, or you're talking to the, uh, uh, the, the reference, they're already, they have, they have their thing in mind already. That what they're there to do is to get this job and or to get their buddy this job or to get their nephew this job or, and here's the problem, or to get this guy out of their workplace and make him somebody else's problem. You call up and say, what do you think of this guy? Oh, he's great. No, you'll love him. Have a great day. Click. Get rid of him. <laughs> you know? That's what we don't want to get. So we want to know how to ask. We want to know who to ask. We want to know what to ask in order to, uh, to, to get the right person. For, the, for what we need. The first thing to do is establish a rapport. When you, you go to do that, what you're actually trying to do is get the person comfortable enough that they'll end up telling you what's wrong with them. And really, what's wrong with them may not be a problem. You know, uh, 
in, in law enforcement, I know that if, if, you, if you go in and admit, yeah, you know what, uh, it was 10 years ago now, but when I was in college, I, I smoked weed and you know, I drank underage, it was kind of stupid, and I, I, I don't smoke weed anymore, I stopped, but, you know, but I did. They'll go, okay, and they'll write it down, you, you know, admitted this, and you go and you do your polygraph, and if your polygraph says the same thing you said, which is, yeah, I smoke weed and nothing else, and the examiner believes you, that that's the way it shows, there's not really a problem with it. You know, it was a long time ago, you don't do it anymore, we make our mistakes, we move on. The problem comes in when, oh, no, never, not, mm, mm, <clears throat> no, no, not at all. And then, then it comes out later. So we want to get enough of a rapport that we get people to tell us these things up front. Make them comfortable that, hey, you know what, if you made some mistakes, it's okay, we'll deal with it, but we got to know. 